Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. I have a special video for you because, you know, I kind of felt like making a little draw my life video. Um, I think I have somewhat of an interesting um, life and I felt like um, sharing that with the world apparently. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's just start off with from when I was born. Um, so my first and middle names are Olivia Robin Rose and I was born on October 20th in 1992 and uh, I was second born in my family and um, my mom, dad, my older brother and I lived in Almont, Ontario um, and we grew up there um, and that, that's my brother Clayton um, and he was two years older than me and my younger brother Joshua was also two years younger than me so uh, yeah. Moving on, we've got uh, school life here. Um, for school, we didn't stay um, in school for very long. We actually went to um, a Catholic elementary school called St. Mary's in Almont. But um, my, my older brother Clayton ended up getting um, pretty terribly bullied um, by certain um, kids. And they seemed, to, they seemed to think that he was just kind of awkward, short kid and skinny. And we didn't like that. My mom was very, of course, she was very unhappy about that. Um, which made me sad and so I defended him in school because I was just a little bit taller than him and it just uh, it didn't work out really well So what happened was we ended up becoming homeschooled under my mom's uh, teaching and my grandma's teaching um, So me Clayton and Josh uh, We stayed at home with our my mom and my, our grandma would come by every couple days um, And we'd go through our homeschooling group books and it was lovely. We all loved it as far as I'm concerned <laughs> But yeah, it was great, and we were there. I think homeschooling. Um, we we were there. We were homeschooled for about eight years, I think. Um, amongst those eight years, we actually moved around quite a bit in around the Ottawa Valley. Um, we probably, I think, since uh, since I've been alive, I've moved about um, fifteen-ish times. <laughs> There's no actually a good reason why that happened. It just ended up being. The way um, we lived for a long time. <laughs> I also, my uh, father was a business owner and he worked with uh, reclaiming wood and he also was a carpenter. So he owned a couple businesses but he would also be gone a lot because he had to actually get the wood in order to sell it again. And so he'd fly around and he'd also drive around and collect wood. But my mom was a stay-at-home mom so we also, we just spent again the time being at home with her, uh, being homeschooled. And um, that was pretty much our lives for a really long time. We also went to different homeschooling programs and stuff with our church groups. Um, so yeah, anyway, here I have <laughs> drawn a little picture of my mom because anytime we kind of went to our houses, uh, we sort of kind of uh, ended up always renovating them <laughs> in some form or another, whether it was putting on like an extension to the house or like re redoing the kitchen, and uh, sometimes it would just be our bedrooms and we always had to sleep in weird places. And then we'd move again, which was a little frustrating for some of us, or for most of us. At some point in our lives, my mom and my dad decided they were going to separate uh, for about six months. My mom and my brothers and I moved in with my grandma um, in Canada. And uh, at that time I was told that I didn't wet the bed for two to three months when I was living with her, which they were really excited about, but I didn't really understand that it, it was even happening. After about six months, my parents actually ended up getting back together, and we were a big happy family, and the reason we got back together is because um, my dad brought the Lord into our lives, so we started going to church together um, in Canada, and uh, it was a really great, great time, because we every single Sunday at 9.30 a.m., <laughs> we'd go to church, as a family in our little Chevrolet Venture van. <laughs> the last house we ended up living in as a family was a three-story stone house in the middle of the country. Um, it was a huge house and you know my parents really loved it so the idea was to buy it um, as second owners actually because it was over a century years old. The family had lived there and died and um, renovate it to make a beautiful house. But a lot of things were happening money-wise and business-wise that weren't working out with my mom and dad. So we ended up having to sell the house and split up as a family. My older brother ended up going to Nipissing, which is in North Bay, and he went to the university there. And my old, younger brother and I went to Arnprayer, and we ended up living with my dad. 
That's where I went to high school. And my mom went to Canada to live with my grandmother. At school, I actually met my, my best friend, that's still my best friend to this day, and her name's Ashley, and I've talked about her in a couple of the videos, but she's awesome. But before we even became best friends, I was super, super awkward. <laughs> um, like, incredibly awkward. If you can't think I'm awkward this at this point, if you think I'm awkward now, I was even worse then. Um, but I didn't really know social cues and stuff, so I kind of eventually got a hold of things, and I had a lot of friends, and then eventually I was just the awkward person that also was kind of you know, funny and happy and all that. Um, another thing I did in high school was I was a uh, jazz choir singer, and I loved jazz choir. Our team was called the Red Velvet Jazz Choir, and it was the best. I love singing, and uh, we used to travel to, for competitions. It was kind of like Glee, actually, and Glee was pretty popular at the time, so I felt like kind of cool. <laughs> I also had a boyfriend in the high school, so him and I had a lot of friends, and it was just a big happy time in high school. I know that a lot of people have a pretty crappy time when they're um, in high school, but to be honest, I didn't, and I thought it was pretty sweet. Um, so, I graduated in 2010, and um, I actually graduated in 2010 with my boyfriend Dave, and uh, we both went to Ottawa University. However, uh, he went to Ottawa University on the fact that he was going to go to do football and scholarship and stuff like that, but I went to Ottawa University thinking that I was going to become an English major, which I did, I got accepted, and I ended up hating it because <laughs> I didn't realize how much I didn't like reading. I really preferred writing over all things and being artistic. So I actually dropped the course, um, my major, and then dropped two other courses and did and just finished the term with uh, uh, sociology and theater and then it pieced out. <laughs> Work became something that uh, I did for pretty much ever since then. Uh, I worked through university, but I did start work when I was in grade 12. So I remained where I was working at in Armprior throughout grade 12 in university. Um, it was my first job, and I was there for about a year and a half. I ended up getting laid off after a little bit because my bosses didn't really like me for some reason. Um, it's a little bit convoluted, but anyways, they said that they'd lay me off and hire me again later, and it was I just ended up quitting because it was stupid. But um, there was where I met my second boyfriend, Michael. And we were together for four and a half years, I, I think. <laughs> the give or take. And he was great. We, he lived in Arm Prior as well. And I moved into his house eventually. And um, I lived there for about six months, I think. Um, however, the problem was that I was still bedwetting. And I know I haven't brought them up much, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. However, um, what happened was I went to go see my family doctor and she referred me to a doctor in Ottawa called, called Dr. Pierre. He was my first urologist I met, and I was with him for probably four years almost, maybe a little bit longer. And he did all most of my scans and tests and medications first. He referred me to Dr. Hickley, who eventually referred me to Dr. Eldman, who's actually my surgeon in Toronto. I was super sad, and it just wasn't fun at all. And I was always going to these doctor's appointments with high hopes and kind of getting crushed after a while. So I've seen quite a few doctors in the area. Um, as I said, we started with Dr. Pierre, uh, my first urologist in Ottawa. He and Dr. Hickling were pretty good buddies, so they studied together in the States, and I met Dr. Hickling in Ottawa as well. There's also a doctor um, who worked with Dr. Hickling at the Ottawa Hospital named Dr. Jerry, and he did a test on me at one point, but I didn't see him more than once. I also went to pelvic floor physiotherapy for quite a few weeks, uh, maybe about a year or so. I was say like weeks, but I went there for a long time. And I also uh, ended up going to see Dr. Elterman, who was suggested to me by Dr. Hickling for the surgery and um, interest in everything. And I also saw my family doctor at Rosencrantz and then a psychologist, Dr. Armstrong. And I'd seen so many other doctors in between, I think I've forgotten quite a few. I also had a doctor I forgot to put in. Uh, her name was Dr. Uh, Briscoe, and she was a neurologist because I thought at one point I had brain seizures, which I don't, I don't think, still, but anyway. Okay, so September 19th in 2013 and October 12th were two major days in my life. On September 19th, I actually went horseback riding with a couple of friends, and I'm not exactly an experienced horse rider, but I do know quite a bit about horses, and I thought I could handle the horse I was on, except I ended up falling off after she galloped away, and I cracked a part of my spine. And then a couple of weeks later, um, I was in a car accident, um, where I was rear-ended from behind when I was actually, it was on Thanksgiving weekend and I was planning on seeing a friend that day in the morning just before Thanksgiving and then a crash happened and of course my spine, which was not healed, uh, got refractured again and was fractured in two different places, it was just completely crushed on either side of it 
which late made me uh, seven months off work and then four months in a back brace. That was super fun. Uh, not really. But yeah, that was an intense, really uh, painful part of my life. Um, it was very, uh, very humbling in some place in some points of it but for the most part I was just really upset and distraught and hurt and angry and sore and alone and all those other kind of emotions and it just tore me to part and I was so sad and upset obviously but just it was painful and I had never experienced that kind of pain before in my life and um, one of my best friend Ashley had said to me at one point in a text something about like you know don't be sad it could have been worse and like she was right, and I kind of it kind of made me feel better about myself. And uh, every morning, I actually would wake up and wiggle my toes to make sure I wasn't paralyzed. Um, but after about uh, seven months, I was went started going back to work slowly. The back pain lessened, but my bladder was questionable because it didn't really uh, improve. It might have gotten worse, but it's not really easy to tell. But since then, um, I've lived at home with my mom and her boyfriend, um, and my younger brother Josh. And uh, we all live in this big old house in the country, and it's lovely, and I love living here with them. Uh, helped me stay close with my family. Um, also, as well, I've actually been working pretty much full-time ever since school. Um, I've obviously seen many, many doctors, and uh, I've, I've talked about depression before. I've also gained weight since the, cer since the accidents and stuff. I also lost weight, too. And then, after all this, I've just been feeling the need to share everything with everyone because it's just, I think it's just a unique story with me and my bladder. And uh, I went to YouTube, and I originally wanted to write a book, but I didn't think anyone would be interested quite yet. Regardless, I just want to say a huge thank you to anyone who has subscribed or watched any of my really random embarrassing videos. Um, you guys are awesome, and I do really appreciate just the love and support I've gotten from like all of you who really uh, don't don't deserve I don't deserve it from you, but again I am so thankful that I'm able to share this on such a huge uh, platform, and I hope you guys can share these videos too, and it just means so much to me. And I really I can't believe I've already hit 100 subscribers in less than like four six months. Um, and that's supposed to be the wow face from the Home Alone, you know, wow, ah, or no, not the wow face, the ah face. <laughs> um, anyways, thank you for watching this really awkward video as well. The ter graphics are terrible. I don't know how to film this. This is really awkward <laughs> and it took a long time to edit. But again, I really thank you very much <laughs> and I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.